let's bring this LP to an end. Uh, I'm gonna miss this one so much. I'll probably be saying that a lot in this episode. Oh, wow. Now, I'll be honest, that scene there, when it first happened, that did get me a little choked up the first time I played the game. But, now, if you've completed all those side quests, not every side quest, but the ten critical ones, this scene transpires a little differently. Well, very differently. So, you get the true ending this time around. It's like the villain of the game has actual character development. We can't have that in a JRPG. He's almost expressing remorse for what he's doing. Well, he is. Well, apparently so. I mean, he didn't die for, well, well, he was killed off by his father. It's not exactly clear how that happened. Eh, whatever, they just said he killed him off. Now this part does still get me a little choked up here and Stack talk about the world and everything. And I love this world. Thanks to all the side quests I did. No more side quests? We're out of side quests? Yeah, pretty much. I've done everything. That's always the sad thing about finishing these LPs. There's nothing more to do. I've researched the game to death. I know everything about the game, or at least I like to think I do. At least I feel like I do, and that almost is a bit sad to me. That's the sad thing about these LPs. Oh well. I have no more reason to play the game again, or... What? What do you mean? Is it boss time in the middle of the ending? We can't have that! But that's the Light of the White Chronicle. Let him sacrifice himself. He's gonna die anyway. Did it work? Hey, hey, it worked! Stock gets to live after all. Yeah, if you do all those ten side quests, Stock lives. If you don't... If I recall correctly, he dies, right? I don't know. I've only gotten the... I've only gotten the not-true ending once. And that was the first time I played the game. I thought he died. He ends up having to sacrifice himself to... Well, go through the, the ritual. But, yeah, so... A great reward for doing all the side quests. Awesome. So, such an amazing job on the side quest. I don't even care that 
You know, I mean, okay, you could call it a cop-out ending. Whatever. I don't care. I like Stack's character so much. He deserves to live. And Heiss does, should feel remorse. And he did for what he done. And he's actually voluntarily paying for what he for what he caused. So I am totally cool with that. I love how they handle that with the ending. And they tie it into doing all those side quests too. Absolutely. What do you need, Otto? No, no, I, I don't think so. And of course, well, Rainy's got to have her booty do. Yeah, mostly for Rainy. More side quests. No, no more side quests. Not unless they make a sequel. I wish they would make a sequel. But it's just so obscure, and obviously it didn't, I mean, they didn't make a whole lot of copies, so they didn't have a whole lot of expectations for it, so, well, I don't know. Oh, well. But then again, Atlas is, like, the company that would do something like that, but, hmm. It doesn't matter which option you choose here, but uh, I'm going to go with stock, because, well, I've lived my life as stock. If you choose the other option, he says something different. So, it, it's very slightly different, too, but... Man, I would love to see a sequel, or even a prequel to this game. That'd be pretty cool, too. Get more, a fuller story and everything, but... Oh, well. Let's watch the credits roll. So now we get to see the full body portrait of the game on the right there. So, yeah, nice touch adding that to the ending. This song is called Historia. So if you if you want to hear this song, because I'm going to be talking over it now, look, there's a video on YouTube, a Radiant Historia ending song. Just look that up, listen to the song. I love the music for the ending here, but I'm going to be talking over it as I review the game. So nuts to that. But for the graphics, I was going to give it a 9 out of 10, but a lot of how I feel about a game when I do the review is, well, how, a lot of how I rate a game is how I feel when I'm recording the episode at the time. And I feel so great about this game, and I want it to go on. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 for the graphics. Just, I mean, not so much the graphics themselves, because, I mean, hey, it's a Nintendo DS game. Come on. Technically, yeah, it's not a 10 out of 10. But I love the art style for the game and everything they've done with it. I mean, the only thing that I think they could have done more with is maybe have different facial expressions for different moments in the game or having a 3D camera rotation for the towns and the exploration and everything like that. So... Yeah, other than that, I mean, the, I love the artwork. It was pleasing to look at. So, I mean, what else can you say about it? For the music, I'm easily a 10 out of 10. Heck, I'd give it an 11 out of 10. I mean, the, the, each track just got the emotion, created the emotion for the game. Like when, uh, during Kiel's death and everything like that. I mean, I've never seen a port, well, maybe not never, but I've very rarely seen a portable game that can do that. Yeah, look at those hairy legs. Holy cow. Hey, I love ya. You're cute and all, but you're nine years old and you got hair the hairy legs. I, I can't do that. Sorry, I'm not a furry. Yeah, same thing with you, Lise. Or Reese. Whatever. I'm getting my main and side LPs mixed up now. But yeah, back to the music. I mean, all the, the, the epic battle themes, like the Red Locusts and the... Uh, was it the Edge of Green? That one, too? All the battle themes have a color in the name, too. That was kind of interesting. But, and the odd thing about the music is that even though there's only, like, what, 25 tracks to the game? I never found it repetitive at all. I mean, unlike, say, Lufia 1 or something like that. Every track, I, it never bothered me at all. And I just love the music for the game. 
for the plot, easily a 10 out of 10. One of the most original plots I've seen to a JRPG in a very, very long time. Villains got tons of screen time, characters had tons of development, side quests gave background to the world and everything, and it never dragged. I mean, there was never a point in the game where I was just like, oh man, I'm just so bored of this. Let's just move on or something like that. I never felt like that at all throughout the game. It maintained my interest. It had motivation, clear-cut objectives of what we were supposed to do, bouncing back and forth through time to create different uh, options throughout the game. And you actually had some... Your choices in the game actually had consequences, like the bad endings. And uh, for the battle mechanics, again, easily, 10 out of 10. I mean, it's just... Not even so much because it was challenging. Obviously, it's a relatively easy game, but the battles hit, were just so engaging. They kept me, it wasn't just hit the A button over and over again. It was, you know, it was almost like solving a puzzle during the battles and everything like that. Buffs, buffs and debuffs were more useful than I made them out to be because, well, I know the game so well, but you could really, for a first time player, they're really useful. So. Overall, easily a 10 out of 10. This game is an all-time favorite. It cracks my top three, right up there with Final Fantasy IV and Chrono Trigger in my book. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just... I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. And enough to... A lot of people said they bought the game, so I'm happy. But there's one more thing I want to show you. When you finish the game, you can save your clear data. This is the only way you can actually get or, or see all the nodes in the game, so let's go check that out. Why not? I'll show it off. Okay, so if you go into the story menu, you see I've completed all 236 nodes. They include the 10 bonus scenes you get during the ending. I'll just quick go over that if you really want to read it, read it, pause. But yeah. But yeah, for each of the 10 side quests that had a bad ending, you unlock another scene here. So there you go. So yeah, I'm not quite sure which ones these refer to, like, actually during the ending, but, well, whatever. And here's the other ones that you get, the, the final boss and other parts of the ending, and, uh... Oh! Huh, so that refers to that scene. Huh, I thought the Red Letter Day side quest referred to that. Huh. Well, I wonder which one that does refer to. Well, whatever, I mean, I don't know. So I hope you've enjoyed. Let's play Radiant Historia. I know I have. I mean, this is the first time that I that I actually wish the LP could keep going longer. Uh, usually, when I finish an LP, I usually like it to last about eh, three months or so. I think that's usually a perfect length. I'm either usually happy with how long an LP lasts at that point, or maybe feels like it ran a little long. Like the first time I made, or well, the only time that I did like Final Fantasy VII. It was the first time I did like a four month LP and I just, I was so tired by the end of it. Not even so much because it was a bad game. No, I think it's great. It's my fourth favorite in the series. And I'd probably have given it a nine out of 10, really looking back on it. But I was just, it just seemed like it was running so long. I guess I was kind of tired of it at the time. And I, well, maybe reviewed it lower than perhaps I otherwise would have. Yeah, I thought about making a bonus episode for this LP, like, like against the final boss, maybe with some more limitations on my party, like uh, no using the change command outside of my existing party members, no turn break, no side quest abilities. And I actually tried that. I tested it out. Honestly, it just didn't really feel like it was anything special. I mean, it, it was just the battle took longer. I was casting G Fire and G Frost, but well, it just took longer. I just wasn't dealing as much damage. So, yeah, to be honest, the game is pretty easy when you think about it and you know what you're doing. And, I mean, it has a couple difficulty spikes, but nothing obscene. So, man, I just, I just wish I could go on with this LP for, like, another month or something. But I guess that's just a tribute to uh, how great the game is, but also the community that I've enjoyed with this LP. I mean, maybe it didn't get the views that, that Final Fantasy Tactics did, but... Uh, I've never experienced anything like the community with this game. I mean, just on my forums, a lot of people were making little comics, making fun of various scenes in the game. And, I mean, I'm just shocked at how much outside media there is to the game. Like, 
uh, various interviews with the development team. There are concept art books, polls going on in Japan. I mean, it just seems enormous considering how obscure this game is. And, well, even more obscure now. I mean, I hear the price of the game has virtually doubled since I started this LP. And, well, maybe just a coincidence, but, well, I like to think I had an impact on it. Ha ha! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day! See you next Let's Play!